Here are the majority of drill bits and fasteners I use as a service and commercial sparky. If you're thinking of getting into the electrical trade or you're already an apprentice or you're just after some ideas, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what your typical electrician owns and uses on a daily basis. G'day everyone, my name is Corey. I'm a licensed electrician from Melbourne and let's just get right into the bits I own. Plus, I'll go over a few other accessories I use. We'll start off with the quarter inch shank bits that fit in your typical impact driver. Our main driver is gonna be the PH2 Phillips head. 90% of the time, this drill bit is gonna be in your impact driver. I'll be using this to tighten and loosen terminal screws, such as on your socket outlets, on your circuit breakers, RCBOs, any other terminal screw that's in whatever electrical appliance I'm fitting off that day. I also use this to drive in self-tapping screws and timber screws and yeah this bit essential next up I've got a magnetic sleeve that you can attach whatever bit you want at the moment I've just got a pH 2 fills which I just mentioned before and the idea is you'll put your screw on the end of your Phillips or whatever and then you extend the sleeve up so that it covers a majority of the screw or whatever fastener you're using at the time and it acts as a guide so that your screw doesn't slip out of your drill bit. The problem is though if you're trying to undo say a J box where the screw is a bit deeper down that's gonna block your Phillips head from entering the Hold. See, this thing just pulls out. Fuck, it's tough. Maybe I should use a, no, I'm strong. I should be able to do this. Mm, no, I'm getting pliers. Mission failed. There we go. See, it's a tiny little bit and it's got a little magnetic sort of shank slot and you can put a longer one, but this doesn't go out too far. So it really only works with a smaller Phillips head. Next are these two hex bits, which are absolutely essential. I'm gonna be using the word essential a lot in this video, especially your five by 16 inch hex bit. For whatever reason, most of your hex screws are gonna be using this five by 16 inch size. For example, I use a lot of concrete screws. These are great for that. Roofing screws tend to come in this size. If you get a kit, I've got a Milwaukee kit, which is the Shockwave, and I've also got a Makita kit. You definitely wanna get one of these sort of kits. Pretty much every tool manufacturer brand out there has their own version, and most of these kits usually have the same thing. They've got what you need, like your Phillips head bit, your hex bits that I just mentioned, and also a few other bits. Next to your impact driver, you want an extension bit. I've got this extension bit right here, Milwaukee, which came in that shockwave kit, and I've got an even longer extension bit over here. Next, we've got spade bits. The sizes an electrician is gonna use is your 20 mil, your 25 mil, and your 32 mil. And basically, you're gonna be using spade bits to drill holes into timber studs. Where of warning though, do not drill into nails because they'll destroy these bits instantly. I'm sure there are ways to sharpen spade bits, which I might investigate a bit later on. Next, absolutely essential, your step bit. This thing is probably gonna be your most expensive bit, but it's so worth it. This one is actually quite fresh. And the great thing about step bits is you can incrementally make holes slightly bigger. And also it's super light to carry, so I'll just have this in my tool pouch. It's good for metal, timber, plastic, pretty much anything this is really good for. If you're a bit stingy and you don't have the money, you can also get step bits that don't have the quarter inch shank at the bottom. They just come with sort of random size shanks at the bottom, which your chuck drill would be able to hold. Obviously your impact driver won't, but these are a little bit cheaper and they usually do come in kits. Next, I've got my auger bits. These are like spade bits, but on steroids, I guess, they cut through timber a bit better and they last a bit longer as well. If you're doing a rough in where you're dealing with timber studs, I recommend going with these over the spade bits. Definitely invest in some of these or get your boss to invest in some. And over here, I've got some random drill bits which can be used on metal or various other materials. The case that these came in, I think the brand was Frost. It broke a long time ago, so I've just had like random bits floating around. Probably should invest in like another kit and that's what you guys should do if you don't have one. These random drill bits that I have 
are only good for chuck drills. They won't fit in your impact driver. You can get ones that will fit in your impact driver. And while we're on the topic of chuck drills, I'll go through some bits that I use in my chuck drill. So over here, I've got a hole saw set that is actually four downlights. And the most used size is your 90 mil. Most recessed downlights come in that size. You'll also come across downlights that are 70 mil. 54 mil is also extremely useful for when you're cutting out holes for socket outlets on a timber surface. Say, for example, in cabinetry, drill sort of halfway through the timber, line the pilot hole to the right of the hole saw and drill the full way and then finish on the left side again. That is a good size for your typical socket outlet. You've got your arbor and your pilot bit and this kit is actually super easy to attach your different size hole saws to because literally all you have to do is put your hole saw through the pilot bit, hold the button down and slide it in and then let go of the button and that's not going anywhere. Next up, you've got your normal hole saws. Again, you've got your arbor. This one's a little little bit more fiddly to use than the other one. But this one's still pretty good. What you do is you pull it down and then you screw your different size hole saws in. You've got your 32 mil hole saw, which is good for 32 mil conduit. From there, you've got your 25 mil hole saw, also a heavily used size as the typical conduit we use is actually 25 mil. And then you've got 20 mil, which I've got here. But the sizes to be aware of are your 20 mil, 25 mil, I guess 32 mil, 52 mil, 70 mil, and 90 mil because those are the sizes we're mostly going to be using as electricians. Over here, I've got a carbide hole saw, which is 54 mil, 51, 52, 54 mil. They all do the same sort of purpose, which is cutting out holes for your socket outlets. The thing that makes this one a little bit special is that it's used for stainless steel and stainless steel is a pain in the ass to drill into because you can easily screw yourself over if you drill in too fast. And pretty much once you heat up stainless steel while drilling in fast, your drill bit's not going anywhere. And you've just toughened the stainless steel up even harder making it almost impossible to cut through. Best practices I have for cutting into stainless steel is to go slow, go in short increments, Make sure you're not smoking because if you see smoke when you're drilling in with a hole saw or any bit really, it means you're just creating heat and friction rather than actually cutting into whatever material. You wanna see bits of debris come out when you drill because you know you're actually cutting through that material. So the same principle applies for stainless steel. You want little bits of metal flying bloody everywhere and lots of lube, like cutting lube. I've got a diamond tip 6.5 mil bit, which is good for mounting power points and switches or really any electrical appliance to tiles. Next, I'll go over the hemidrill bits or you might know them as SDS bits. As Sparkies, there are two sizes we're gonna be using mostly, which is your five mil bit and your 6.5 mil bit. Five mil bit is for your concrete screws and your tappets or your nylon anchors or whatever you call them. Five mil is probably the bit I use the most because when I'm drilling into masonry like bricks and concrete, I like fixing with concrete screws because they're super efficient and easy to use. 6.5 mil bit, we're gonna be using this for green plugs, which I am a big fan of green plugs. I've also got a few other random sizes. I've got a 10 mil size, which I don't really use too much. And I've got a 25 mil long masonry bit, which I'll typically use in brick walls. And behind me, I've got these really long bits back here, they're still in their packet. I got them because they were super cheap and Craftrite is like a cheapo brand. And last but not least, when it comes to my hammer drill, I've got a chisel bit, which is really good for chiseling into anything masonry again. And on my hammer drill, I'll just chuck it on the hammer mode. So it's not actually rotating, it's just sort of hammering. Now I'll go over a few extra accessories I use as an electrician. We've got my angle grinder blades. In here, I've just got a pack of these 125 mil, which is the size that typically fits in angle grinders. But I've also kept my diamond blade in here. I use this on tiles. And the very last thing I'll be talking about in this video is is the multi-tool bit. I've got the sort of higher grade bit which cuts into like your hard metal timber. Pretty much cuts into everything and hopefully it will last me a while. I only got it semi recently. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've got some ideas and this video was useful in a way. Also comment down any video ideas you have for me and check out my other videos if you have the time and are interested in similar content. And yep, thank you, see ya.